Hi, once again. This episode, I'm in Darwin in the Northern Territory, and I've been working at that place over there. It's the Darwin Convention and Exhibition Centre. I've come up here every year for the last 10 years and usually worked over there. And I love this place. It's full. It's really hot. It's steamy. It's close to Asia. It's full of interesting food and crocodiles and mining and beer and all sorts of things. But what I really like to do when I'm here is to go over there to the Stokes Hill Wharf. Let me tell you a story about it. Hey, it's seven o'clock in the morning and I'm here in Darwin and uh, it's already stinking hot and I can feel the sun on my face, but I wanted to tell you this story. Uh, you can see these are light installations. They do a great light festival here, but that's the Stokes Hill Wharf right behind me. We're gonna head out there if I can. Now, the story involves my grandfather who was a, an engineer, but more importantly, his brother who was a doctor. He was Dr. Hyde and he served in the First World War on a hospital ship at Gallipoli and then after the war or after the Gallipoli campaign the ship was moved to the English Channel where he served on there and they were patching up people who came from the Somme campaign. After the war he set up practice in London in Harley Street but fast forward 20 years and he's here at the Stokes Hill Wharf. He's taken a position as a ship's surgeon on a Burns Philp ship that was used to ply around the Orient and the, uh, the coast of Australia and delivered supplies and things. So it was a bit of a step down and I'll, I'll tell you what happened later because it's also quite interesting. But on the morning of uh, February the 19th, 1942, their ship, the Neptuna, is moored right here at the Stokes Hill Wharf. And that morning, if the historians amongst you know, was the, the morning that the Japanese Navy launched their fantastically planned and quite successful surprise attack on the city of Darwin. It was the biggest attack ever on Australia and in 1942. And his ship was blown to bits. Dr. John was on the ship at the time and he, after they got hit by a couple of um, bombs from the, the Zero bombers and the ship caught fire. They were evacuating the ship. A lot of people were injured. He stayed around as long as he could to, to patch up people and then they headed off uh, through the burning oil and he helped save many, many people that day. In fact, those apartments that you can see behind me are called the Neptuna Apartments. So that's the story of, of my uh, grandfather's brother, John Hyde. And uh, it shows the power of, the, of surprise in a lot of ways. And that's a tool that we MCs and speakers and salespeople, what, whatever kind of thing you're trying to sell, the power of surprise is an important one. And I'm gonna give you some tips on how you can use surprise and storytelling in your presentations. Let's get out to the wharf. I'm back home now. I didn't quite get all the way out to the end of the wharf that day. It was so hot and then I suddenly realised I didn't have time to get right out there and then back to the hotel, out to the airport and a five hour flight back home. But there's a great Wikipedia page you can look it up and with some interesting photos. 43 people died out there at the, on the wharf and on the ship that morning. Some people describe it as Australia's Pearl Harbour. He got a medal, an MBE, for his efforts in saving so many people that morning. But the question remains, why had he taken up a position as ship surgeon on a, a 20-year-old, smaller ship working its way around the Pacific and, and Asia, patching up the, the broken limbs and uh, strange tropical diseases that sailors invariably suffer from, when just a few years earlier he had a successful practice in London's Harley Street. I'll tell you in a minute. As a speaker, an MC, or a salesperson, the art of surprise is a powerful tool 
as is telling a personal story. People often aren't expecting it. It catches them unawares, and once hooked, they want to know more. And the fact that you are still watching this kind of proves my point. And it also creates a rapport. They connect with you on a deeper level, enabling you to get your message across, whatever that may be. So if you're an MC, make sure you check out the 10 ideas in the article that I'll link to below and up there. How to add surprise to any presentation. You can use any or all of the ideas immediately to add some great surprise to your next MC assignment. Things like changing the pace, changing the rhythm, using props or different techniques, creating anticipation and suspense. And speaking of which, exactly why was Dr Hyde out there the morning that Darwin got bombed? I hadn't even known he had been in Darwin on that day until a few years ago when I read a report he had written into the sinking of the ship. It was the official inquiry explaining how it got sunk, the death of so many people, including the ship's captain. And that's when I started to dig a little bit deeper. And I looked through some of my mum's notes on that side of the family history, and I discovered the truth. You see, after the First World War, he'd set up practice in London and quickly settled into society there. But it all fell apart a few years later when it was discovered he was having a scandalous affair with another surgeon's wife. And I imagine he got drummed out of town, thrown out of his exclusive clubs and shunned by the medical society there. And that is why he was on the Neptuna on that morning in Darwin. Hey, I've enjoyed telling you the story. I hope you're going to check out the article. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so, and I'll see you again.